could be a huge moment in this game, in this season, as Glasgow Warriors eye up a place. Hi folks, welcome to another uh, Rapid Game Review. Uh, for this episode, I'm doing Glasgow versus um, Ulster, played in Scotland for URC. Um, before I start, I'm just going to say that please don't forget to subscribe and like the video as you watch along and also comment in the comment section just positive vibes be nice no politics I'm not here to answer about load shedding or Ramaphosa or Mandela no please no it's only about rugby I'm only doing rugby here not politics thank you so this game starts is played under these bad conditions it's bad conditions in, in in Scotland. Go for the post. A bit surprised by that, Stevie, I think. Certainly, it's not very often you see from the kickoff the ball stays live for two. Um, it's very wet and uh, it's very windy also, which is going to make it very difficult for the players to show their skill sets uh, when they are trying to attack each other. Because these teams are mainly based, when their game tactics are mainly based on expansive rugby. Uh, for five inside five minutes, Glasgow initiated a multiple phase attack uh, in these wet conditions, but don't really crack um, open the Aster defense. But they're showing a lot of, um, but they're showing a lot of um, some good skill set in the rain. We you know the ball retention and the passing along their their lines. There, it's beautiful. But of course, it's challenging because it's very wet and it's very windy in, in Glasgow today. So. I'm not sure if going about it this way is going to be fruitful for them in the long term in this game. Um, at around minute 10, we got the first scrum and Glasgow concede a penalty in this scrum. Uh, one of their props uh, put his knee on the ground from huge pressure coming from Alster front row there. So they concede a penalty. From down. The front rows. Asta get a line out, they go for touch from this penalty, they go for touch and get a line out and throw a holler. It's horrible. They throw a, a skewed line out. Again, it's, I think it's coming from the fact that it's very windy in Glasgow. So the ball gets affected by the wind. So the ref blows um, his whistle, turn over to Glasgow. Um, but from this attack, nothing really happens. Nothing really happens from this situation in the game. Nothing really fruitful happens. Alster fullback knocks a ball just outside their 22. Um, Glasgow scrum feed and they take the ball out from this from a steady scrum set piece outside the 22 of Alster to attack towards the left side of the field. So again they are trying to launch an attack uh, of Glasgow from a set piece. And after three phases Alster concede a work penalty. Glasgow go to corner, drive a well formed mall to go and score a beautiful try. Uh, for these conditions, so a beautiful try through Sione Vailano. Potential target for this liner, that's exactly where it goes. Glasgow Warriors get the ball, it's moving, it'll be very difficult to stop from here for Ulster. Can Glasgow get it down? And for these conditions, it is of course ideal that you're gonna score most of your tries for malls because you're not gonna be scoring from expansive rugby. You're not gonna score a lot of tries from expansive rugby today. It's for it's very wet. Beautiful try from Glasgow, by the way. Uh, the game proceeds and after get a ground turnover penalty just outside the Warriors 22. And also they do the same thing, they kick for touch. And try to and then throw a line out and try to drive a mall that goes nowhere, goes to the ground, and then they recycle the ball and go for a few phases, uh, passing the ball for a few phases, and then they reach over the try line, but then the ball is held up, it's not grounded over the, the try line, so it's a ball turnover. Try line drop out for, to, for for Glasgow. Leaves it, Treadwell. It's close, and that one has been held up. It will be a goal line dropout, and Glasgow Warriors.
Rangers get a huge result there. No, no, no. Again, you see this law, I don't agree. I'm not fully convinced that this dropout law is going to be good in the long term in rugby. I feel like it gives a lot of advantage to the team that is defending. Because once a ball gets over the line and then is held up, it's no longer a scrum, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dropout in the, in, in the trial line. I think they should find another way of, of sol solving this problem. Maybe add another five, maybe add a 10 meter marker from the trial line. And then if the ball is held up over the line, it, the team that was attacking retains the ball, but then does a quick tap 10 meters away from the trial line from the Thailand of the team that's defending. I think that would be better for for to give advantage to both teams, you know, to award both teams. You don't want to put the team that is defending under pressure by doing a five meter uh, set piece scrum, but also you don't want to give them too much advantage. The team that's attacking by giving them a five meter tap, quick tap, close to the turn of the team. So I think they should maybe add a demarcation line or add like a marker or something five meters away from the five meter line that's there right now in the rugby field, and then allow the team that it was attacking to have a quick tap instead of a scrum because the scrum really is an gives an advantage to the team that's attacking, not the team that is defending. Don't give a, a try line dropout to the team that was defending. It's very unfair for me. That's what I think. But you know, yeah. Then around 28, 28 minutes, Alistair receive ball and attack. Oh, Alistair receive ball from the, from the kick and attack for two phases and Glasgow commit foul. Alstar then go for corner from this penalty, throw a line out, good line out this time around, to form a mall. Uh, Tom Stewart breaks off the mall to the ground and they work it for one phase. On the second time, they work it for one phase and Alstar's number six does a, a, pick, a pick and drive and goes over the try line to score for Alistair. Ulster will look to go from five metres again. Treadwell, the go-to man for this short line out. Now, Tom Stewart has the chance to break off. Looks to step round Thomas Gordon. Treadwell again. And now picked up from the side and the try. Beautiful try for Alistair, again. It's the forwards doing their work in these wet conditions. That's what you rely on when it's wet. The forwards must do their work. Those nice pick and goes, they must just work the forwards. Shem. Unfortunately, the, the, the back line goes to holiday when it's wet. Around 38 minutes, Glasgow initiates a long dynamic attack spell. But Alistair have a superior rush up defense. Also, they are very physical in the contact zone. Warriors are not gaining any meters in the in the gain line, they are not getting any meters in advantage in the gain line. In contact, um, Glasgow and also I've realized during this, these attacks that Glasgow are not mixing it up. Because in, in what if you realize that a team that you're playing against is very good defensively, you're supposed to have your, your nine or ten make decisions that maybe they can have like a grapper kick or a true kick to allow your fullbacks to chase, you know, put the other team under pressure. Don't just do a lot of don't just be as expansive if you're not going anyway. Especially if you're getting pushed back by the team that's defending. But Glasgow were doing that here and they were not going anywhere.
Um, after 10, the, uh, exactly, you see, and then from this attack that's not going anywhere, after 10 over the ball and then kick for touch, from this from this touch they launch a line out and then they start their own impressive attack spell from around 18 meters outside the Warriors 22 meters 22 meter line sorry Asta are attack with some grapple kicks trying to vary things you know Asta are attacking with variety in their in their spell they are not only one dimensional they are mixing it up with with kicks if they see that they are not going anywhere in attack they kick over or they do like a they like a kick for touch yeah Connor. O'Connor now O'Sullivan Gordon and Matthews in to ensure he doesn't get any further Doak stop for fire, fire, stop. Moore who chips through and a couple of little ricochets now in the hands of Stockdale quick ball Come. but after multiple phases Warriors win turnover from this from this from this spell from from this Alster spell so again Alster are attacking but they're not going any they're not really getting anything from their attacks so two minutes from half time uh, Glasgow win a turnover from a mall from a mall from a kick so the ball is kicked to Glasgow by Alster. So a Glasgow player gets the ball and then he gets a chop tackle from a chalk tackle. So a choke tackle from an, an Alster player. And then it forms a mall, is held up, and then ball doesn't come out, go to the ground. So by law, the ball is retained by Glasgow. But initially the referee gives the ball to Alster. You see another law that's very confusing. Doak now with the kick to see who between the two scrum halves can gain an advantage. Certainly a territorial win for Ulster. Jordan trying to get to deck. That isn't going anywhere. It's from the kick, so it won't matter. Even if this goes to ground, this should be Glasgow ball. It's a bit of a mess in there. It will be Ulster ball. Got that one wrong. I think they should just have a law that says that if a ball if 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 in any open play a player gets a choke tackle and uh, and they form a mall and is held up and the ball doesn't come out, the ball must be given to the team that was defending. Don't have this thing of confusing people because even the ref was confused here that he gave a ball the ball back to Alster because they thought maybe it was he forgot that it was a, a mall from a kick. So I think that to simplify this law, make it easy, just say that from any mall that's formed in open play, the ball must be given to the defending team. Finish and clear, move forward. Simplify the game to make it more appealing to the new audiences. At 40 minutes just before half time, Alster get a penalty. 45 minutes 45 meters out from Warriors pose and they kick successfully for the three points and the halftime score is Glasgow 5 and Alster 8 the teams go to the Sheds and they return from halftime around 44 minutes in halftime Glasgow apply a box kick tactic in the second half in this second half Glasgow apply a box kick tactic in the second in this second half. In the first half, they were very one-dimensional, as I as I mentioned earlier, that they were very one-dimensional. They were not mixing it up in their attack. So in the second half, they apply a goal a box kick tactic. Um, it's a competitive box kick. Uh, Warriors win a penalty from this, but their attack does not really lead to any points. But it's positive. It's showing a lot of, it's showing some variety. It's showing that they are willing to mix it up in the second half. I made a note here that both teams concede multiple turnovers when they are inside each other's two meter areas. In minute 63, Alster throw a skewed line out. A uh, referee blows whistle to, to signal that the ball is turned over to, to Glasgow. Glasgow. Glasgow go for a scrum. 
and get a scrum penalty from the scrum. Um, from this scrum penalty, they kick for corner, five meters outside Alstar's try line. Uh, show a line out. From this line out, they form a very good mall. Very good mall. And they go on to score a, a try through Jack Dempsey. Of many kicks at goal. Can they back it up? They certainly can! Jack! This is the second time now uh, Glasgow are scoring a try from a mall. Second time. They are very clinical, especially when they are close to the Astros uh, try line, you know. But I guess it's good. It's a good. It's a good tactic for for for, for Glasgow. They are aware that we're playing in wet conditions, so you will not score tries by using expansive tactics. You're gonna have to go through the hard ways, the first principles, the set pieces, especially the mall, you know. And they do that here. Beautiful try from Jack Dempsey. Um, around 66 minutes. Glasgow break in a check through Ali Price. It's a great run he makes here. Price, Price spots again. Ali Price searching for options. He might need to go in alone. He still has it. Mackay on his shoulder. They're hitting it at paces. Johnson. McDowell gets involved. But ball is quickly turned over by Alster. Again, nothing really fruitful comes from this. But I just made a note that it's beautiful. It's showing that Ali Price. He's showing his impact in the second half by coming in as a substitute. As a substitute. Uh, Glasgow has have improved in the second half. Their attack is not multi. Their attack is multi-dimensional. It's a mixture of passes and cross kicks. Much better. They are more in control of the of the game and they are more energetic because their fans. They are playing at home in Glasgow. Their fans are giving them a lot of energy, cheering them up to go on and win this game. Glasgow get another attacking opportunity uh, showing a lot of agency in this attack putting the opposition under pressure after under pressure and it's, it's raining you know there's a lot of rain it's wet and as a result from this attack they Asta concedes a penalty from this penalty Glasgow go for touch and launch a line out just inside after 22 to go on and score through an organized mall drive uh, they go on and score from this small through Fraser Brown. But Brown will look to get things started again. Finds JP Dupree. Away, away, out. Greg Jones told to retreat okay, back to a legal position. It's Fraser Brown. They're almost up to the five. Price helps it out. Still goes Fraser Brown. Again, a substitute. Beautiful clinical from, from Glasgow. Three from three. Third more, third try. That's how you play in wet conditions. Beautiful. Set pieces, be clinical. Um, the Glasgow bench is having a huge impact on the game compared to the more dominant Alster bench. Guys like Ali Price and Fraser Brown are showing a huge impact, improving Glasgow's second half cause and attack you know the way they do the decision making is has improved from Glasgow in the second half at minute 80 Asta get a penalty close to the post and they opt to kick um, and they kick for three points they score through Kuni um, and the game ends final time score is Glasgow 17 Asta 11 so the game ends here uh, there isn't much I can say about this game because it was not, it wasn't pretty because it's, it was a lot of, it was raining and there was a lot of wind. So it's difficult for the players, it's difficult to play rugby when it's wet and windy. It's difficult when you have to receive the pass at a high pace and you know there's a defender in front of you and you can't see things clearly because it's wet. There's wind blowing into your face and the ball is swerving also. So it becomes very difficult. But these guys, you know, they showed some huge skill, some high skill set. Well, I expect that from them because they are professionals. But uh, again, it was not pretty. It was not pretty. You had to roll up your sleeves for this one and, and just apply the basics. Set piece, pick and goes. Malls were huge in this game for Glasgow especially. The malls were huge. So yeah. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, 
like so that the algorithm can see can send this video to other people who love rugby also and also comment on the sections but be bring positive vibes positive vibes no politics i don't discuss politics it's only about rugby thank you very much